let me give you five decisions that you will have to make if you want to excel maybe we should just write it five decisions number one the decision to be serious with God is a very powerful decision you must make a personal decision that I will be serious with God my word study my prayer my fellowship my spiritual growth is a decision that I make number two the second decision is a decision to be transformed make up your mind and decide that I'm ready to replace every wrong paradigm every faulty belief system that I have no matter how it came from where it came from and how long it has been in my mind I'm ready to work on it we've done several teachings that touch on belief systems you can do well to get them listen to me no matter how born again you are the level of your enlightenment your paradigm can destroy your destiny the Bible says we have been called out of every tribe and every tongue and every nation is that true I told you you know you are transformed when it is difficult to trace you to any earthly region I shouldn't just look at you and say you are behaving like Yoruba people uh-huh Igbo Abi you say yes I said that's how they behave or you are a northerner from where and I help you not by prophecy by the implication of your character your behavior I help you suggest where you are coming from and get it with accuracy if you are transformed I should I should be so shocked when you tell me where you are coming from territorially speaking because you have embraced another set of values a belief system that is far superior to any race or any culture on earth the only place I should be able to associate with you is heaven I should be shocked when you tell me you are Yoruba or you are Igbo or you are Hausa or you are South South or you are American or you are British you mean it yes born and bred there yes ah, are you not the carpenter's son but what was I doing at age 12 I was ensuring that I'll be transformed so when Satan came believing he would meet the carpenter's son he had one who already had it is written it is written that didn't come with his background it is written was something he outsourced in the way oh I know where you come from the men are very irresponsible change that narrative through your life the men are very angry the men are this and that the women are like that change that narrative do not be conformed to this world it says I beseech thee brethren Romans chapter 12 and verse 1 by the message of God it says that ye offer your bodies a living sacrifice unto God holy and acceptable he calls it your reasonable act of service then verse 2 says do not be conformed to this world is the Greek word aeon the thinking pattern that comes with this system he says but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind If you think Zaria and leave Zaria, the limitation of Zaria will be on you. Are we together now? You can travel to America and yet in the realm of the spirit and in your mind, you are still in your village. Have you seen people like that? They left Egypt in one day. How long did it take Egypt to leave them? Every time they face something, Egypt shows up again. God says, oh, I want to do so much with these people. Just because you are physically out of a territory, does not mean you are delivered from that territory the Word of God is the authorized channel for transformation be it unto me according to your word according to your promises I can stand secure will you carve upon my heart the truth that sets me free according to your word O oh Lord be it unto me so from one room 
you turn to Deuteronomy 28 and verse 1 and here's what it says to your destiny it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God to do and observe all that is written there it says that you will be exalted above all the nations of the earth and that these blessings will come upon you and overtake you I believe that right from where you are God can lift you and give you a voice that the nations will hear without faking it right from where you are make a decision to be transformed my dear brothers and sisters transformation does not come by impartation there's no anointing for it there's only grace that supports your diligence to buy the truth and to sell it not it will cost you materials it will cost you the study of scripture you must invest in the truth make that choice to be serious with God and to sustain a superior belief when the rich come and talk with you even though you may not have five naira here but you have the wealth of a superior understanding the wealth of a superior understanding number three the third decision that I want you to make with your life is the decision to be exceptionally valuable The decision to be exceptionally valuable. The decision to be exceptionally valuable. I can break all this into separate studies. I've done a lot of them here. We're doing a refresher course here. To be valuable. Can I tell you this? For as long as you live in the realm of mediocrity, that is the realm of competition. That is the realm of bitterness. That is the realm of jealousy. That is the realm of envy. In fact, that is the realm of the flesh. There is a realm higher than those dimensions. Excellence by the Spirit. He says, Oh Lord our God, how excellent. His name is not only great, it excels. Make up your mind that you are going to be so valuable it will be impossible for your generation to ignore you not from a carnal competitive standpoint but brothers and sisters hear me nobody will clap for you for nothing people love you but they love themselves too and if there is nothing in your life that supports kingdom come if there is nothing in your life that supports the betterment of the life of men you will be at the lower levels of life are we together it's a decision I made with my life that I will be exceptional I don't have the assignment and I don't have it as a goal to know everything but the areas where God has called me to function the areas where I need to be competent as far as my personal progress and kingdom come is concerned I made up my mind that I would triumph over pain until I get to a level of mastery and competence Someone sent me a text and said, Apostle, you are so good. I said, compared to what? Compared to what? Compared to my background? Compared to those around me? No. My reference is scripture. My reference is Jesus. My reference is that standard. This is what makes you global. Listen to me. Listen to me. We live in a world of mediocrity where even as a failure, they start clapping for you. This is the level of mediocrity that is in our sociological context. Where nothing has started but the applause have started already. No. You must challenge yourself under God. Make up your mind to be valuable. Don't celebrate mediocrity. Believe me, it will not take you far. If you're a worship minister, make up your mind that i will sing his praises to the nations in a way and manner that kings will be able to call me and they will be proud the grace of god upon my life will bring such defense to the gospel that your incompetence will not become a reproach to the gospel believers are lazy people because of provisions like the grace of god the anointing and the rest so we excuse it and we're not diligent God, even you, you know I didn't study as I'm coming to preach. 
but would it make would it have made any difference if i read is it not just your your anointing that comes upon me and you continue to do it until the day god lines all your destiny help us and you close the door of the next 10 years by yourself make up your mind that you're going to be competent don't say i'm in zaria don't say i'm young don't don't refuse those kinds of things i'm a man of god i agree but who and who can place a demand on the grace of god upon your life and not be disappointed ministry ethics zero proper understanding of the foundational doctrines of scripture zero the intelligence and even the psychology of communication zero there is a lot of work to do i agree that you're a prayer warrior but that's not the only key to excelling in ministry you go back and learn the other rudiments that make for excellence before you receive the applause of men study who is clapping for you first if the devil is clapping run away if mediocres are clapping appreciate them but settle down but if champions clap even if it's just once let it be healing enough that you're making progress say in the name of jesus i make up my mind to be competent to excel are we together yes sir make up your mind if there is one person in this city who will be a reference as far as maybe tailoring and fashion is concerned let it be me don't sit down and say believers don't come to patronize me the last time they came to you what did you do you take it as a challenge and go back and do your homework praise the name of the lord are, are we blessed yeah i returned one time from a crusade and a dear pastor friend was calling me just to comment on what he thought the lord did in the crusade and when he called me he had a message playing and he said what are you doing i said i'm studying he said you are joking i thought you just returned back to the room like an hour ago i said yes sir he said you are studying i said exactly right ah with all that happened there and i told him something i always say nobody claps for you for the same thing twice if they clap once that's enough for that realm you stay in that realm you have received the applause once and for all champions are goers forward thinkers those who win the olympic as soon as they return just a few months of rest and they are it again reject mediocrity my dear people reject mediocrity you sang when they invited you in a church you went off key you didn't even remember how you started and how you finished and someone outside who is your relative your relative will tell you well done no matter what you do because they love you but you must be honest and assess yourself not condemn yourself i can be better but this is not the best let me go back and do some work you're listening you're learning something Try again. Then one day you become a master. It's masters that define their realities. They define their rewards. Nobody is going to bless you and follow you indefinitely. Please believe this. You know you are leading when someone is following you. It's in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. I know. There's more that's found in me. It's in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. I know there's more that's found in you. And we will never settle for less. We know there's more. Just sing it one time as a determination. We'll never Listen. Find out how results are produced. Find out how things work. Find out. How does a church grow? How do people excel? 
how does influence happen how does grace come how is it multiplied the seed for an answer is a question if you're not asking anything you don't deserve an answer hmm. hallelujah I'm always asking questions asking the Holy Spirit asking on common mentors asking myself asking the word asking the wisdom of men that has been captured in materials when you ask questions an answer will come how does this work there has to be a way proverbs to 18 verse 1 to desire a man having separated himself the bible declares seeket and intermeddleth with all wisdom Apostle God is calling me to speak to kings. Then you must learn how to speak to kings. You don't speak to kings like you are speaking to prisoners. You must learn that art, the ability to speak to kings. Next decision. Make a decision. A very strong decision that you are going to have very strategic destiny relationships make a decision that you are going to have very strategic destiny relationships Re destiny relationships that are intentional not one that just happens intentional relationships that help you preserve your values relationships that challenge you to rise to the highest levels of your life relationships that provide a leverage be fruitful means be relational everything multiplies on the basis of relationships listen to me if you categorize all men as the same in your life wisdom is not at work in your life you should be able to write who are the top five men in all honesty who are the most useful individuals in your life so far who are the top five people who are deserving of your honor who are the top five people who are the greatest shoulders you can lean on you cannot relate with everybody at the same level no jesus had 72 jesus had 12 jesus had three Jesus had one. There are people when it has to do with resourcefulness, they should always be there within your reach. There are people who may not be very resourceful, but they are incredibly dependable. You can depend on them. You can wake them 2 a.m. in the night and say, come and help me hold something. If you say thing for me, they failed already. But show me what I will do. They will do it and stay there. You can't communicate the same level of honor to everybody. It's lack of wisdom. It's a decision I made with my own life, my dear brothers and sisters. Love everybody. Relate with everybody. Communicate a level of honor to everybody. But if you want to rise, you must be intentional. And strategic who are the five people who inspire you spiritually as far as your friends and relationships are concerned if all your friends are poor broke ungodly unserious imagine imagine that if there are five people around your life who are visionless and unserious, you didn't count well. There are actually six. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. He that walks with the wise. He doesn't have to desire to be wise. He that walks with the wise. The Bible says he shall be wise himself. It says, but the companion of fools shall be destroyed. Jesus fasted all night to choose 12 people as Jesus so filled with the Holy Ghost and he fasted and prayed all night 
take the issue of relationships very serious in your life who is who are the few people you can depend on for prayer there's an attack in my life i can call you can we pray can we agree if you don't have this in your life you will not go far for many of you you destroy your life because the moment you are under pressure whoever is available is the voice you talk to it is not wisdom nicodemus came to jesus by night he knew the right person to talk to rabbi forget what we said in the day we know that you are a man sent from god for no man can do these things except god be with him are we together make up your mind make up your mind The Lord says, so 5,000 Naira. You just sit and say, who do I sow to? A, B, C, D, and it stops at any name and you just, no, there's no discernment. There are people in my life who are ever deserving of honor. It's intentional. I know the grace and I know the role that they play in my life and my destiny. It's a decision you have to make. Woe betides a man who will look left and right and find out you are alone. The Bible says it is not good for man to be alone. You've heard me say it. It's not just talking about a woman. That when man is alone, it is risky. Because two are better than one. Then it says a threefold cord cannot be easily broken. That you must trust God to have at least one or two genuine strategic friends in your life. By covenant, not emotion. Covenant is higher than emotion. Emotions vacillate. I like this. I don't like this. Covenant, you are bound by a revelation. We die together. We stand together. This is the principle of Jewish people. And this is what many non-Christians use. Is there any man in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? Is there somebody in your life today that if you desperately need money, like you des you know that I'm not talking of borrowing, you actually can go to the person and say, please, you know I'm not lazy. There is a situation here and the person can actually help you sincerely. If nobody likes you that much, pray for both favor and help us. Believe what I'm telling you. You may think I'm just entertaining you, but the days that come and as you rise, you will see the potency of this. If you have to work for everything by yourself, you're in trouble. There must be somebody who sees your life worthy enough to connect to. If nobody wants to come close to you, something is wrong with you. Something should happen to your life that someone should be able to look at you and say friendship is worth it with you. Don't just pray for destiny help us. Pray to be one first. It's a decision you have to make. A great decision. Many of the doors that will open to you in this life will open by relationship. Woe betides you when you stand and you are watching the corridors of your destiny with many people moving and there is nobody there who your life is worth their attention. There are people who may not have physical cash, but they have a wealth of relationships. There is somebody always remembering them, always remembering them for good. I remember five years ago what you did come and I will lift you. I re can I bless you? No, I don't need that blessing. Do you have a son or anybody around you that I will bless? There are people in political positions today not because of their competence. Relationships took them there. Even your spiritual growth is dependent on relationships. Believers hear me, the easiest way to rise and succeed in life is through relationships. It's a decision you have to make in your life. If I ask you, mention five of your friends, do you have an answer? Or your answer is per week or per season. If they pay salary, it changes. There's no salary, it changes. If God opens a door, it changes. 
you are you are you are moving on a time bomb I've had the honor and the privilege of interacting with a few fathers of faith in this nation by the grace of God and one of their secrets is that their lives are bound in such secured covenants of relationships with a few friends they have they know someone's car can spoil and before he fixes it the friend will send his car and say he should be using it until and later it can even be you will not even know who is the real owner of the car I know someone whose house burnt before he got there true story his friend had moved his things to one of his houses and said over my dead body that your house is if you don't have this kind of people in your life hear me I'm, I'm giving you a prayer point go back and pray before you punish your children and your children's children there must be somebody in your life who believes in you enough to die for you greater love had no man than this than a man laid down his life for his friend when I was in secondary school there were friends called FFF friend for food when they visit you you know this visiting day that they do all of a sudden wicked seniors who flog you every time suddenly become nice and cautious because your parents are there And some of these dangerous people may even be your own family members someone wants to lift you somewhere and it's your own family member that will say no he's the last born don't lift him and yet will come out and laugh with you and say how are you may God keep increasing you oh may God give you genuine people I pray for you in the name that is above all names may God who is the helper of men bring sincere people to your destiny sit down it's a decision you have to make one last decision for the sake of time and then we'll pray I pray that the words that I communicate to you tonight would help to shape your destiny that it will give you a reason to think this night hallelujah the last decision that I encourage you to make tonight is the decision to be empowered the decision to be spiritually empowered hmm. my head is exalted like the horn of a unicorn and I am anointed with fresh oil. My head you have exalted like the horn of a unicorn. And I am anointed with fresh oil. The decision, listen to me, the decision to contact genuine authentic spiritual power to the degree that empowers you to represent the purposes of the kingdom without shame is a decision you must make in your life Acts chapter 10 and verse 38 how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth not just that he was anointed look at the extent to which God anointed him he went about under the influence of that anointing the bible declares doing good and healing all they that were oppressed of the devil believe me when i tell you the anointing truly makes you a blessing the capacity to provide supernatural solutions to the lives and the destinies of men the ability from the spirit to dislodge the powers of darkness to ward off the arsenals of hell the ability to take advantage of the grace and the supply of the spirit and move destinies forward is a worthy decision it takes more than just quoting scripture it takes more than just having head theological knowledge listen to me dear brothers and sisters it takes even more than just a decision to go forward there must be an engracing of the spirit 
a smearing of that oil from heaven that can come upon a man and distinguish you turning you not just to a worker of miracles but to a sign and a wonder yourself he says i am the children that the lord has given me we are for signs and even for wonders in israel i'm glad that i made this decision many years ago and i thank the lord god of heaven for the staying power to push and endure it still remains a pursuit but today i look back and i'm humbled and even broken that God granted me the grace to stay and contend for spiritual empowerment. Be ready for empty pews if there is no genuine anointing. Be ready for an empty life if there is no genuine anointing. There is a hungry world that is desperate to see Jesus revealed, to see Jesus manifested more than just the communication of the talk of men. Problems are real. Challenges are real. And most of them are beyond the realm of intellect. They are beyond the realm of science. It is his divine power that gives us all things. The giver is his divine power. Oh, God has called me to walk in the healing ministry. I beg you in the name of Jesus and I beseech you. Stay until you contend for grace that is genuine. That can really truly heal the sick. Tomorrow, several thousands of people will be here on this ground. Several thousands others will be connecting around the world. Hoping and trusting that God will come through for them. We can make our boast in the Lord and say, come God will heal you. Come God will deliver you. But will it really happen to them? Someone right now is depending not just on Jesus Christ alone, but depending on your level of contention for grace. For their mirror. You literally have the power to make someone's challenge one day left. And it's gone. He says to appoint unto them that mourn. You can set a date for their liberty. What greater expression of love and kindness is more than that? God is, God is calling you into the ministry of wealth and abundance. More than just your knowledge and sense of finances and business, do you really have the grace that empowers people? I became a spiritual archaeologist. I took my Bible and I sat down and I said, Oh God of heaven, Please do not send me with just a salmon. My world needs more than a salmon. Do not send me with just a good heart. My world needs more than a sincere heart. Do not send me with more than just a kind heart. The world needs more than character. The world needs more than a sincere heart. There must be an investment of the spirit. Power from on high genuine power that comes upon a life and lifts you to a level where your life becomes a sign and a wonder where when people behold you they begin to rejoice because they know when they met jesus they were happy they knew their predicaments had come to an end i continue to pray and challenge myself by the spirit that God will help me to rise to that level in the spirit where as I stand and I look at people's situation I can rejoice and cry with them and say I know that an end has come every time they met Jesus they rejoiced if you were the widow at Nain and you were on your way to go and bury your last child if you saw Jesus he represented hope this is my pursuit so while you clap for me and say apostle thank you for what you're doing my mind is stayed on that target lord we must get to a point where we heal nations in a day we must get to a point where we bring continents and territories to their knees for jesus in one day we must be able to dislodge the powers that sit not just over families but over territories bring down these horns in one day there is a dimension of grace that can supply that result until we are there we are not yet there This is my motivation. I don't listen to the uploads of men for too long. Thank you. Thank you for this. And that's it. We had the miracle service in Abuja. And 
I mean, I cannot begin to tell you the tremendous testimonies, not just there online, the mighty testimonies. And when I went back after rolling before God to tell him, thank you, I said, Father, thank you. I am grateful, but I'm not satisfied. There was still one person in that auditorium who was not healed. There was still one destiny that was still left. Because of that one person, I forget the things that are behind. Don't just say, I prayed. Five people were healed. Out of how many? Ten people were delivered. Out of how many? That your life will be such a blessing. You're showing up. It's like the coming of the, uh, His Majesty Himself. The lifting up your voice is like the opening of the gates of men's destinies. Brothers and sisters, until we get there as a ministry and as individuals, let us not be complacent with what God is doing. Thank God for what God is doing with Koinonia all around the world. But do not fall into the seduction of greatness. The enemy of best is better. Better looks very comfortable, but we must keep pressing. With everything, with everything, we will shout for your glory. With everything, with everything, we will shout for that ye are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses the bible declares it says let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us then it says that we run with perseverance the race that is set before us looking unto jesus the bible declares who is the author and the finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him the bible says he endured the cross and despised the shame prayer point number one father my life must count I obtain grace grace from heaven lift your voice and pray I make a decision that my life must count as far as kingdom come is concerned my life must count Make sure you are praying. Are you praying? Shelemekate paruta sadabala da bala da bala. Shadebrede kete bala da bala da da bala da. You are brooding over 